Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to be talking about how to parse JSON data very easily and effectively. Um, today, looking at this file here, we're going to take a look at how to take out each individual post out of this array right here and then fill up our entire collection view that you're seeing in the simulator on the right. Now, this uh, Facebook feed that we've built is also another video tutorial that I'll post down below if you're interested in how it's made. So going into our controller here for the application, it's going to run it. And you notice that I have a lot of individual posts for each row manually created by hand. And what I want to do is... Um, I actually just want to get all of that data that is inside of that commented block. I want to get all that data from this all post.json file uh, eventually when I'm done with the project. But first, I am going to show you how to uh, very simply parse a single file like this, and then we'll see this post being populated in the simulator. Now, without further ado, Let's go into our view to load and parse that file. Okay, now to get that file into memory, we first have to read it into the app like this. So if let path equals ns bundle, main bundle, path for a resource like that, and we'll just use the name of the file. And for type, we just say JSON. So in the other bracket, and here we need to uh, let's just do do here. The reason is because we will say data is NS data. Contents of file. Contents of file will be path. Options will be NS data reading options. And we'll say data reading map if safe. So the reason why we wrap that in a try block like that is because this requires a, uh, a do or a try like so. And then we have to catch the potential error that will be tossed by this try right here. So this is a pretty typical pattern in Swift 2.0. Here we'll print out what the error is by saying print. Now we will get our JSON dictionary by serializing it like this, JSON object with data, data like so, and this will be mutable containers. Don't worry about what that means for now. You're fine if you just type it out. Finally, I'm going to print out the dictionary like that. Cool. Let's see, now this is also complaining about the try. Swift 2 likes us to try and catch these potential errors. And hitting line 44, we see the post uh, correctly printed out exactly as we're seeing in this single post file right there. Pretty nice. Now we have to get each, yeah, each individual property from this dictionary right here. And then we have to set it up in a post object, which is up here. So post is a class that contains name, profile, image, name, status, text, and so on and so forth. And we have to set up all those properties. Now we can do it manually, step by step, by accessing the dictionary, or we can do it in just one line of code when we uh, get access to that object. So I'm say if let uh, post a dictionary equals JSON dictionary. Let's see, let's get to that post object there, and we'll cast this down as a, a string to any object like so. I'm going to say a post. I'm going to create my new post object and using the secret one line of code, we'll set up our post object like that. And then just for kicks, we'll print out the name and status text. Just to prove to you that this post is being set up properly with the correct properties. All right, 
optional Mark Zuckerberg by giving more people the power to share it. We're making the world more transparent. That's Mark Zuckerberg's quote. And that's being grabbed from the JSON file. Now I'm going to, let's see, rip that guy out right there. And let's just delete that as well. So I'm going to say self post equals post array. And refreshing that, we will get one row with Mark Zuckerberg here. Profile image is what we specified inside of this JSON file here. So Zuck profile corresponds to this asset here, Zuck profile. And the rest of the remaining uh, UI components are being set up just like how we want it to be, with the exception of this missing line of text here. And this bit of text that should be showing up here is the location of the post. So Mark Zuckerberg lives in, let's say, for example, lives in San Francisco. So how do we introduce a location object in here? <clears throat> let's say, for example, we have um, <clears throat> location as city, state, San Francisco, California. And then we'll paste that here. And now, uh, okay. Now we actually need to set up this location property on the post object. So the, the quickest way of doing that is to override set value for a key like this. And I'm going to say if key equals location, um, this property, I'm going to instantiate a new object. So location equals location like that. I'm going to say location, set values for a key, just like what we did previously down here. And we'll just use value as uh, a string dictionary, like so. And then if it's not a key, let's see, this actually needs to be just a string of location. And I'm just going to say super set value for a key. Now I'm going to show you line by line what is happening. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here on line 55, and I'm going to set a breakpoint there. Running that, all right, running that, we now hit the breakpoint of line 55. And so I'm going to hit the play, and it's going to hit line 24 right there. Every time this set values for a key with dictionary is called, it's individually calling set value for each one of the properties inside of the dictionary. Hitting play. Look at key. It, key now is status text. So if I hit step in, it's going to skip over that line and it's set up the property for status text. So you notice how status text is nil right now. I hit run and status text is being set up. So Take a look at key. I'm interested in when it becomes location. So location is a key now. Step in with this button here or F6. I'm going to create a new location and set up the location with the uh, the dictionary that's being passed in. And now location is set up with San Francisco and California as city and state. Now that's exactly how you would want to set up your classes within another class makes your code a lot easier to read and more maintainable in the long run. All right, that's pretty good. It's going to continue running that. And so our application now contains the location information along with this little globe icon there. Pretty much like how we wanted to set it up. Now the one gotcha or the one catch of using set values for keys with dictionary is that if you introduce a missing property on your class right here, let's just say, uh, let's just call this info, info key, and uh, some other information as the value. If we run that now, the application is going to crash because it is no longer responding to this info key. Uh, when performing this set here. So the way to fix this kind of naively is to say information string 
to introduce that key on our post object. Let's see, I think I got the key wrong. So uh, info key, I think, yeah, info key. And now the application runs, but we want we don't want to create this information key just for the sake of fixing the application from crashing. We can omit it if we uh, do one thing here. So I'm gonna create a super uh, kind of a safe JSON object here. Subclass it as an NS object, and for set value, I'm going to do something a little special here. So the special part kind of corresponds to what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to create a sample post and create that post object. I'm going to call uh, perform selector with object like that. So selector will be um, set name with a colon and close that off. Is this as my name? And then I'm going to set a breakpoint for line 57, showing you exactly what those two lines do. So having done this, having performed the selector of set name, the sample post now contains the name of set name. So this is how you perform the actual setting of a property on your Swift uh, objects. So let me just comment that out. And now that we, um, know how selectors work, we can say, okay, if uh, if this class responds to selector, and the selector will need to be a selector like this, so selector, and this needs to be some kind of string. So that string will be uh, selector string equals key or set, and then we need the actual key, which is this key here. But the one exception is that the first character of um, key needs to be capitalized. And what I mean is uh, needs to be a key, uppercase. First, let's see, character is that first like that and unwrap it like so. And then the remaining uh, piece of the string for the key. And we access that by saying characters drop first like that. And here we'll just say selector string. And for this, we'll use that selector we created. And then we'll say uh, super dot uh, set value like this. And this will be value and key. Now that we have this kind of a safe setting of objects, we'll subclass post as this safe JSON object now. And running that, it will no longer crash from the uh, the setting. So let's see what's happening now. Running a uh, breakpoint at line 38, we get this key here. And so the problem is this needs to be a string because drop first provides uh, not a string, but a series of characters. So selector string is now set status text. And you see that if I step in, it uh, should respond, but it's missing a colon right here. Okay, running that one more time. See set status text now of course uh, responds to uh, that selector. And then let's see, so set status text, uh, set num likes, set status image name, comments, name, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's one of the kind of issues that you'll run into if you don't perform this check here. But having said that, everything else is set pretty easily with just this one line of code, and I think we're good. Cool. Now to get the rest of the rows inside of our collection view, we're gonna need to parse this entire JSON file called all post. To do that, I'm going to parse it here, all posts, JSON. And for this key right here, I'm gonna call it posts instead because <laughs> this is now the post key. And so here, let's just remove that and remove that. 
And let's just print out what post dictionary. Actually, let's just call this a little more precisely to what the name should be. Printing out post, we get uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's see. So the problem here is all post is now a an array of dictionaries. And this right here is just a dictionary, so we downcast it as a an array now instead. Cool. Now we get the entire post from all posts, just like what we wanted to do. And here, um, I'm going to construct a new array by saying. Uh, self dot post equals post array, and then I'm going to loop inside of this array object here, which we'll call post array. So post dictionary inside of post array, like that, and then we'll just construct our post objects in here. Post dot set values for key post dictionary, and then self dot post will append that new post object and then let's get rid of that cool now we get the entire feed with these three posts that are coming in from this all post file here clicking into that we get uh, Mark Zuckerberg Steve Jobs and Mahatma Gandhi so down here and let's just see if this still works. Okay. So if you are interested in how to build this animation here, I strongly encourage you to take a look at the link down below on how to build the feed and how to perform core animation to animate this object like that. Cool. Now, the last final part is to... Um, actually, let's see. Okay. Now let's assume you have a web service that provides you JSON data like this here. Um, this is the JSON feed from Google's RSS web service. And it is found at this URL here. I'm going to post it down in the description. And let's just use this one right here. So I'm going to challenge you to parse this entire data structure using the type of class uh, setup that we have here using this safe JSON object. And I want to see if you are able to perform the, uh, the JSON serialization. So what I mean is you are going to need a feed class that contains uh, let's call this safe. Uh, that contains all of this good stuff here. So you will need a couple of properties like feed, URL, uh, title, link, author, maybe type. Uh, a description that is actually a reserved keyword, a reserved method. So let's just make all these strings. And if you can parse all those using this method here, I think you're pretty much golden on how to use JSON from the third-party APIs or web services. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Um, and please enjoy coding and tell me what you want to learn about next. All right. Thanks and have a good day.